sorry. What else can I say? Sorry for what, exactly? Hmm? I don't know, for, for, for forgetting the insurance, OK? I know it's unforgivable. But... That's not what's unforgivable. Thinking I'm stupid, that is. No, I don't. Of course never... you do. You believe that if I looked at the accounts myself, I wouldn't notice what mess we were in. Look, I didn't want to worry you. So when were you going to tell me? When my credit card was stopped? When the electricity was turned off? Or were you going to leave it until our house was repossessed? Honey, I promise you I am going to get us out of this mess. How? So far, all you've done is get us in deeper. Get me the laptop. What do you want a laptop? I want to see the business accounts for myself. <laughs> Would you like another drink? No, thanks. Try something else. You try something else. Oh, this bloke left his toothpaste a, a, a week, you know, in uh, in the back of my cab the other day, and oh, well, you'd have thought I'd have noticed how cold it was up top, without it on, you know. But he never claimed it. Oh, the, the stuff we've got in our lost property cupboard is... Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's got loads of stories like that, haven't you? Nah. <laughs> hey, tell her about when them lads left the shop dummy in the back of your oh. <laughs> <laughs> And you <laughs> thought he was still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just told her. Why don't I show you around the house? We can go and have a look in the shed and all, if you like. Can I see my room? Oh, of course you can. We should have shown her that. Oh. Oh. Come on. <sighs> <sighs> I don't understand this. I can see the money that's gone into the rebuilding of the shop, but we should have enough money in the business to cover it. Annie, can I explain? I think you better have, don't you? You know, I was just uh, hoping I could find a way to fix it without worrying me, you know. So, I like the shop here. And we get a tram to the roof. Right, no money coming in. And no insurance. Okay, Swinton. The empty unit that was two doors down is now a fresco fast track. It killed us stone dead. Well, that's two shops. Uh, Eccles. And we've got major roadworks. Right? Set to last a year. Nowhere to park on the whole parade. Everybody's struggling, but you know this. Openshaw. The council there discovered asbestos. <laughs> in the flats where most of our business comes from, they moved everybody out. Hmm? Business is just bad. We've got the recession. But prima donna. Now, that was good. That was a good investment, right? Yeah. But you know what we're going to have to do, don't you, Deb? <laughs> we're going to have to sell some of the shops. My shops? It took me years to establish them. Well, we can keep Weatherfield and the kebab shop. The rest are going to have to go. <laughs> no, but like, years. Oh, it's throwing good money after bad. It couldn't come at a worse time, you know. The, the, the shops, they're not going to make, make anything near what they're worth, right? It's the only way to keep us afloat, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's the only way. <coughs> I'm sorry. No. I know. Tea's ready. Sausage and chips. I don't really eat tea. Some crisps when I get in from school. And then some before I go to bed. Well, they're nice sausages. Can I just watch Tilly? If you want. I, I was thinking of making another cake. Uh, chocolate. Fancy helping? Do we have to? Of course not. Not if you'd rather watch telly. Oh, right, well, in that case, I'm going to nip across to the Rovers and sort out next week's shift with Steve. Since when did you have to go to the Rovers to sort out work? Well, maybe this man's making her nervous. I've been told that I do. She needs normality. And me going to the pub is normality. Make your cake and make it a good one this time. Telly or DVD? We've got a few films. Telly's fine, sir. 
David, I think it's Christmas. Him coming back from holiday, me leaving. Oh, come on, you two have had your moments, but deep down he thinks the world of you. <laughs> He's got a funny way of showing it. Uh, well, this is David we're talking about. I was thinking how peaceful it'll be. No bickering about the bathroom or who's in charge of the TV remote. It's for the best. You know that. Do I? Have you really thought this through, Nick? Of course. Well, what about the bar? What well, more of a reason to go than to stay? Do you really want people saying when the going gets tough, Nick Tilsley bails out? You came here from Nottingham when that wasn't working. You left Underworld when that got difficult. And now people will say you're running away to Italy. Yeah, girl's right. When has running away ever helped? Huh? I'm not running away. Just don't want to see Leanne every day, wondering if she's really happy with Peter. And you won't be wondering that, sat in Italy? Look, wherever you are, sweetheart, you've still got to look at yourself in the mirror every morning. Who's going to be looking back at you? The Nick that runs away? Or the one that's made of stronger stuff? What are they betting the Trucker Brothers don't even notice we've made an effort? <laughs> not told Cheryl about the money, have you? You see my face? That's because I know. Yes, because she doesn't. <laughs> Thanks for covering. It's all right. All righty then. Are we all set? Oh yes, I'm feeling lucky tonight. Aunt Casino is supposed to be dead on a Monday. Desperate to get a few mugs in. Well, I know where I'd rather be, and it ain't behind this bar. Mm, free food and a hundred quid's worth of complimentary chips, won't it? Either. <laughs> Come on then, Mr. Lover, Lover Man. <laughs> hey, Steve, Steve, hey, listen, you got five minutes? Oh, no, baby. Come on, I'm whisking him for yeah. a night. I'm out. sorry, it's a five minutes, huh? Please. All right. Um, <sighs> well, I won't be long. Just have another drink at the bar. All right, everyone take a seat. Come on. Hiya. I am so sick of fresh gold meals for one. Are you? What? And then there's. Oh, should I open that bottle of wine when I'm on my own? Plus. I wanted to say thank you for lending me your washing machine. You, you lost me, are you? Right, hob or oven? Oven, I think. Oh, no. Why don't you choose a bottle and open it? For all plenty. Do you know why they let wine breathe? I mean, what is all that about? Actually, I'm just going out. I was going to get changed. No, there's no need. Not for me. No, but I'm... If you're embarrassed about the state of your house, don't be. I never tidy up unless I've got guests coming. And um, that doesn't really... I'm not embarrassed. A man at ease with himself. I like that. Oh, but this room could really do with some feng shui. Right, well, I'll get some glasses then. Huh? Yeah, Stevie boy, I've spent my adult life, right, building up this chain of grocers. <laughs> the kebab shop. And yet I'm proud. I am proud of my achievements. You know, it's a legacy for my children. Now, you of all people, you just understand this, right? No, I do, trust me. You know, and, I, and I've tried to get loans. Really, I've tried, but yeah, you know what the banks are like. And you know, the final straw? The disgusting lowlife who uh, looted the safe. Drop in the ocean, that surely. Yeah, no, but Steve, that would have been enough to get my shop here, my best shop, up and running. It would have, it would have bought me time. And that's why I'm here. I'm begging from a true friend. Do you, do you know how hard this is? Dev, five thousand. Steve, that's that's what I need, right? Five thousand tied me over. Is the money I would no, have I had? I can't. I'm sorry. I really can't. Look, if I had the money, I would write you a check right now, but I am in as big a hole as you are. Bigger. Yeah, right. Mate, listen. I have got loans all over the place. I owe streetcars ten grand. You can ask Lloyd. Okay. Come on. I'm sorry. Okay. I had no idea. No, no, please. I want, uh, a favour, yeah? No words. Hey. Because I might not have any money. We still got a pride. Yeah! Baby, your wife is a winner! Tell me, sir.
something I don't know. Right, hold on now. I can't believe he's black again. Yeah, how does it feel, look it? Right, we're going to red. Oh, that money you owe us. Oh, mate, I thought we're on a night out, you know, having a laugh, not business. I was going to say, if I stop nagging, do you give me your words, you'll pay me back the minute you can. What do you want? I had to cross me out and hope to... All right, promise. Love my life. Mm -hmm. We are 50 60. quid. 60 quid up! Are you having a go? No, thank you very much. Roulette is for mugs. I fancy something with a little bit more skill. A blackjack? Why not? Right, but don't be losing more than we're winning. What happened, my dear? Listen, baby. Mm. You're all right, aren't you? You have been a bit quiet since Deb showed up. Well, Sinny has given him a hard time. Well, and he came to you for advice. That is one desperate man. Oh, well, he could have done worse. He could have asked you. Ooh! <laughs> Twilight, yeah? Into vampires, then. What would you know about that? Well, someone left the books behind when I was in hospital. You've read him? What do you think? Yeah, it was all right. Well, I was bored up my tree, all right. <laughs> have you seen the films as well? Well, don't tell anybody. But yeah. Bet you fancy Bella. Nah, a bit wimpy. Don't tell me you're Team Edward. Of course. Robert Pattinson's so fit. I've got a cousin called Robert Pattinson. Oh, he's certainly not fit. <laughs> the family call him Buffalo Breath. He's only good features here, like mine. <laughs> Do you two live together? Well, I'm 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 stopping at Izzy's, so. It's such a romantic. I've never known anyone in a wheelchair before. He's horrible. I'd rather not need it, yeah. Was it an accident? Medical. I can stand and walk a bit, but not much. People see me standing, they think I'm faking it. <laughs> like I'd want to pretend. <laughs> Will you two get married? Where'd you get her from, MI5? Sorry. <laughs> if you're going to be part of this family, you need to know stuff, so don't be afraid to ask questions. Apart from why Dad don't get his hair cut, that's something we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you've got the nerve to come in here. Ah, sorry to disappoint you. Well, it wouldn't be the first time you've disappointed me. But perhaps we shouldn't talk about that in front of Mummy and Granny. Do you actually have to work at being so unpleasant, or does it just come natural? What's that they say about the truth hurting, Audrey? Like you are remotely acquainted with the truth, please. Two red wines and a chewing tea. What, she doesn't spit in it? Oh. I was beginning to worry. You're looking after Asha and Adi. Sophie. Oh. You have no idea what's been going through my mind. Well, that might be something silly. Hmm? Well, don't worry. My life insurance is paid up. Not funny. I'm drowning your sorrows, won't you? I don't think that you want to see my face right now, okay? I may be mad with you, but I still love you. Come on. I'd offer to buy you one, but I didn't think you wanted to join in the celebration. I'm reopening the bar. After all you've done, <laughs> you've got a cheek. Use some room to talk about cheek. Oh, let's put all this nastiness behind us and move on. Fine. But if you cause trouble for any of my family again, it won't just be Peter you've got to watch out for, OK? You've got my word. The last thing I want is any trouble with anybody. Are we celebrating? No, his look ran out. Along with the free chips. We had enough to scrape together for this. <sighs> How are you two lads doing? Well, as you can see from my hands, I have no chips, but Hubby here is doing rather nicely. Oh, how well, nicely. Very nicely. And he's going to quit while he's ahead, unlike you two. One more. Oh, come on, mate, we agreed. Are you in, sir? Yes, I am. Oh, if you lose now, you'll Shh. be gutted. Not right, good, that is it, though. Cut. Is that much better? It would be if he was playing poker, three, four, five. Card, please. That's it, mate. You, you've got to stick there. You can't twist on 18. Card, please. Mate! Ah, uh, 22! Is it? No, it is. 21. Get in, thank you. Oh, man. Hang on, them all yours? Uh, no, actually, uh, one of those. I'll pull through. Thank you, sir. Well done, buddy. Shazza, that is a thousand. <laughs> that is a thousand. You got thousands? I thought there was just one. Uh, oh. No champagne. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, this is dead weird. Oh, I thought it tasted all right. In fact, I was really pleased with it. No, no, the food's smashing it. I meant you. I meant 
I've not been sat here with anyone for a meal since Molly. Oh, drop more. I'm not usually a wine drinker, but yeah, go on then. Have you had any counselling? What? Well, you've been through so much. No. This was invaluable to me when my father passed over. Some of the insights are really profound. Fight sad with sad. There are times when you will feel sad. This is when you should sad yourself. That's not profound, that's just rubbish. Yeah, not finished. S-A-D. Share a detail. A remembrance of a loved one that will bring a smile to your heart. What, and you believe this stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, you will too. <clears throat> Sometimes you will feel sad at work. Share a detail with a workmate. I work with Kevin. Or a friend. <clears throat> Molly was a lovely woman. Very friendly. I mean, look at all that money she raised for charity. Those fun runs. That was the cover for their affair. Her and Kevin, they wasn't running. A pound a mile. Oh, please tell me she still gave the money to charity. Right, Roth, Mum. Only popped in to say hello. Oh, no. Faye's been so much brighter since she came. You, I promised you I'd take her for a meal. Can I have something to eat now? I'll make us all something, shall I? Mm, it's up to Izzy. Gary says he don't want to go yet, but he says it's up to you. Stay, please. Yeah? Yay! Oh, thanks, love. Wish we could open a few cans, but it's verboten in front of the lass. No, mm. no worries. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, son. It, it was like a nightmare before you came. Oh, oh Stevie, this is going to kill me not saying you know. what. Look, it's nobody else's business, especially not Tracy's. I know, but it would make the night really perfect just to see their face. Look, if you only find a way of causing trouble about it, it is not worth it. Well, if ever there was a face designed for slapping... <laughs> <laughs> Spare us a minute, eh, mate? What's this? Men's talk about new switchboards. No. No, it's not. You'll have it. You'll find the ambience much more... ambient now I've feng shui your room. Don't you think? I'd give anything to know what she was thinking. You know, that night. Oh, well, don't talk to yourself about it. Won't do any good. I don't even know why she was leaving, not really. Well, because she was having an affair with Thingy, sponsored by yours truly, Julie. Yeah, but she wasn't. Well, not anymore. Maybe she just left because she felt guilty. Makes sense, I suppose. Oh, she just couldn't live with the pressure of him living across the road. And me loving her, our son. Must have been terrible for her those last weeks. She must have been so miserable inside. I can feel her torment when you say that. Yeah, everyone thinks I must hate her like I hate him, but... What if all she needed to hear me say was that I forgive you? And that, and that we could have worked it all out? And... She never knew. In spite of what she did... She was always my Molly. She belonged to me. I know I shouldn't say that, it's not politically correct, but that's how I feel. Oh, no, you mustn't feel bad about saying that. Oh, I would give anything for someone to say she belongs to me. She's my Julie. <laughs> oh. Did you ever look at her eyes? She had the most fantastic eyes. Sorry. Well, that was what first attracted me to it. Just, just the most wonderful blue eyes. <laughs> I just wanted to look into him forever and for her to look at me and love me. I'm sure. <laughs> she could still be here now and Jack could still be our baby. And we could have six, ten more and they'd all have her eyes. I miss her, Julie. I just can't stop loving her. <laughs> that is not the look of a man who's just won thousands. I, um. I can't give you that money. Oh, I am. Why not? 
If I tell you, you've got a promise not to tell anyone, not even Cheryl. What? Like you promised me that you'd repay the loan as soon as you could. How long did that promise last, Steve? What, two hours? I want it for something else. I can't believe I'm hearing this. I want to give it Dev. The richest man I know. Why do you want to lend Dev my money? His business might go belly up. If Dev's got problems, then I'm sorry, but it's not down to me and it's not down to you. I won't let you do it. Look, if you think I want to give him this money because I feel sorry for him, Lloyd, mate, it is a lot more complicated than that. Well, I've got all night. Can't you just trust me? Steve, you say one thing and then you do another. You better sit down. You know, we had to give Kylie that 20 grand for Max. Which is why you're in this hole in the first place, yeah? Yeah, well, she came back for more. What, and Dev lent it to you? Wasn't alone. <sighs> Look, the night of the tram crash, Kylie turned up blackmailing Becky. It was five grand or she takes Max. We didn't have it, we couldn't get it. Anyway, Becky stumbles across Dev's safe all smashed open. It's the answer to all her prayers. To pay off that little skank. Mate, people were dying. People were trapped. Oh, no, Steve. Look, this is my chance to make things right. Since Steve got back off his holidays, things haven't been that good. So will guilt-ridden Steve confess to Dev that Becky stole his money? Simon Gregson spills the beans in a video interview. Watch it at itv.com slash Corrie. I'm just overwhelmed at the moment. Hardly surprising, because they have to do a triathlon. The Biggest Loser is next. <laughs>